uh, the guys they left behind. Morrow. Morrow? No, Carroll and Lane. Yeah, Goring and Smith. It's nifty, isn't it, folks? To ensure the safety of both players and fans, please do not leave or climb off the box that closes the ice. Can we uh, throw us up on uh, on camera one more time? I just want Mr. Lasker to see that we, we brought the book to the game. We're thrilled to have it. The Canadian club did not come to the game. <laughs> no. I, the CC didn't come to the game. Build a personal, build a personal earth station for worldwide satellite TV reception. Jake's and I... Reads well for an athlete, doesn't he? We're going to build that. We're going to, we're going to, yeah, as long as the words are big. <laughs> as long as the words are big, you got it. And we're going to build one when we go home, aren't we? Yeah. And try it out. Yeah, we got nothing to do to them. Two and a half to air. Two and a half to air. Uh, two and a half to air. Two and a half to air. All right. Sparky is coming. Uh, and now you'll hear it to you. Uh, and for the New York Islanders, number 31, goaltender Billy Smith. Also, number 91, center Butch Murray. Is my rug straight? <laughs> Live from the Met Center in Bloomington, Minnesota, Sports Channel presents New Year's Eve in the National Hockey League featuring the New York Islanders. Tonight, the Islanders take on the Minnesota North Stars. Hi again, everybody, and a very happy new year from the Met Center in Bloomington. I'm Jake McDonald with Ed Westfall. The Islanders completing a four-game road trip tonight and hoping to beat the Minnesota North Stars in order to at least have a 500 record on this trip. They did the last time in here three weeks ago in an impressive hockey game. Tremendous hockey game, Jake, as you'll remember. It was a 2-2 tie through the first two periods and then a goal by Brent Sutter, one that kind of squiggled in behind the goaltender, uh, Jules Malash. Kind of an unusual goal, but that made it three to two. Brian Trache got an empty net goal, but uh, all but for that, it was a tremendous end-to-end -end action kind of game. There was some slow-down moments, but the Islanders, unusual, coming into this game, coming off a loss to Winnipeg, an overtime win to the uh, Los Angeles Kings, and prior to that, of course, Washington defeated them seven to three. So you know they know they're going to have their hands full, and it's going to be another game. I think that uh, everybody's trying to knock off the Islanders. Everybody wants to test them, and when a team like Minnesota looks at the game from last night and sees that Winnipeg could beat them, although Winnipeg beat this Minnesota team 5-1 to one not too long ago. Yes, this past Monday night, as a matter of fact, in uh, Winnipeg. Since then, the North Stars have come home and gotten themselves into another shootout. They defeated Toronto 8-6, to six, and that's been the story. A lot of goals by this team, but they seem to get themselves into a pattern where they're forced to come from behind. From the Islanders' standpoint, tonight a lineup change. Butch Goring will miss this game. Apparently an injury uh, occurred in the game in Winnipeg last night. It did, Jiggs, and it seemed at the time to be kind of a meaningless check. Two players collided, Dale Howard Chuck and, uh, and uh, Butch Goring, and it happened in the center ice area, but they hit knee to knee. It was an unusual thing, and whenever that happens, you often look to see which player or either or both players are going to get up limping. In this case, Butch Goring, after the game, I guess, when he started to cool down, uh, found out he was hurting in the knee, so that's going to keep him out of the game here, at least one game, as far as we know. Well, tonight, a battle of first-place teams. Minnesota leading their Norris division. The Islanders leading the Patrick division. We'll be ready for the opening face-off right after these messages. Problem. I'd probably stand up near 
the end. <laughs> but right now, I'll see it. Yes, sir. Okay. Do we have a score out of New Jersey? It was an afternoon game. Washington won it. Okay. Huh? Oh, okay. Hey, seamless cutter! <laughs> you best be careful, boy. Huh? No. There were five games in the National Hockey League last night at Winnipeg. The Jets defeated the Islanders in overtime. The goal at the 29-second mark for a 4-3 victory. Calgary moved into second place in the Smythe Division, defeating Vancouver by a score of 5-1. Edmonton in a close game, a shorthanded goal and a power play goal for a shutout win, 2-0 over the Boston Bruins. Los Angeles kept pace with Winnipeg. They scored nine goals at Hartford, as you see, 9-3 victory. And the New York Rangers, with a 6-3 win over the Philadelphia Flyers, have tied Philadelphia for second place in the Patrick Division. We take a look at what's going on tonight in the National Hockey League. Chicago's at Detroit, Boston at Vancouver, the New York Rangers playing at Buffalo, Quebec is at Montreal, an afternoon game, Washington over the New Jersey Devils by a score of 3-2, a late goal to win it for Washington. Pittsburgh is at St. Louis tonight, and Los Angeles is at Toronto. The Islanders are playing their 39th game of the season tonight, and they lead the Patrick Division six points ahead of the Philadelphia Flyers and New York Rangers coming into it. A record of 25, 11, and 2. And 179 goals for the Islanders and the Flyers and Rangers. Washington, a solid fourth place at the moment. Pittsburgh, 13 points behind them. And then the New Jersey Devils. And tonight's opponents, the Minnesota North Stars, are six points ahead of the St. Louis Blues in the Norris Division standings. Minnesota with a record of 18, 14, and 4. Then the Blues, a point up on the Toronto Maple Leafs and Chicago Blackhawks. That, too, is a very, very tight race. You see Detroit still in it, only three points behind Chicago. We're approaching the halfway point in the regular season. For the Islanders, they'll play their 40th game on Tuesday night at home against the Boston Bruins. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the New York Islanders is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the New York Islanders and Sports Channel is, of course, prohibited. You see the North Stars and now the Islanders limbering up in their respective zones. We'll get our first look at the number one draft pick of the National Hockey League in the entry draft of last June, Brian Lawton, the talented youngster. The North Stars picked number one, passed up an opportunity to play for the United States Olympic team and signed a contract here with Lou Nanny and the North Stars. He was out of the lineup with a separated shoulder when these two teams met three weeks ago. Well, we look forward to getting a look at him tonight. Since these two teams played three weeks ago, the Islanders have a record of 6-2 and all. The North Stars 3-3 three, three, and 1. We mentioned that Butch Goring is out of the Islander lineup. Bill Smith is the third man as far as goaltending chores are concerned and left behind when the trip started. Lord Lane with an ankle injury. Billy Carroll with a groin injury. And Kenny Morrow with an arthroscopic surgery on a knee this week. For Minnesota, Tom McCarthy with the mysterious back injury will miss this game. Jordy Douglas and Dave Richner are their scratches as well. Richner, a defenseman, Douglas, a forward. And of course, McCarthy had made up one third of that hot scoring line. And without McCarthy, Dino Cicerelli has been struggling for the Minnesota North Stars. One assist in the last nine games for. Dino Cicerelli, very unlike he, who has 20 goals and 16 assists at this point in 36 hockey games, 36 points. 
Now the teams lining up at their respective blue lines. This capacity crowd at the Met Center in Bloomington rising as we honor America this New Year's Eve with the singing of the Star Spangled Banner. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare, the bombs burst Sting in air Gave proof through the night That our flag was still there Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave O'er the land of the free And the whole The officials for tonight's game, the referee will be Dennis Morrell, joined by Dan McCourt and Ron Foyt as the linesman. Well, they knew their names and skated right up to them, didn't they? Efficiency. Now let's check out the goaltending. Roland Lamontson goes to work for the Islanders. You see the record at 7-5-1 and of the 3.73 goals against average. He has played in only two ties against Minnesota, 0-0-2, and, and there's what Jill Malash has done this year. The Islanders start with a line of Brent Sutter, Wayne Sutter, Clark Gillies, and the North Stars moving quickly. Broughton's shot was blocked by Deneen. Lord Deneen and Denny Potvin together on the Islander defense. Wayne Sutter up to Brent Sutter as he comes over center ice. Slaps one on target. Turned aside by Malash. Gillies with the rebound, and he shot it up into the seats. Close call right from the faceoff. Gordonine, a fine defensive move. Potvin fell down at the blue line. Broughton stole the puck, skated in, let the shot go. Down in front of it. Works it into the center ice area for Acton. There's the horn ending the opening period. Referee Dennis Burrell got somebody with the stick up. Brian Trache is going to get the penalty. He got the stick up on Lindgren. Down in the corner when they were fighting for the puck after the puck was loose. Cleared around the net. Trache got the stick up on Lindgren. Kind of a late stick. And the referee, Dennis Morrell, is going to send him to the box. Everybody milling around, as you see. But when the second period begins, Minnesota will have a man advantage. We'll take a look at what happened here as Brian Trache goes to the corner. And there's Lindgren. Watch the left arm, Trache, right here. Fighting him off. Then after the play... After they had separated, Lindgren started to move away. Trache brought the stick up on him. That's where the penalty came from. We've completed one period here at the Met Center in Bloomington with our score. The New York Islanders 2, the Minnesota North Stars 1. We'll be back with a recap right after these messages. you people with the dish. Happy New Year.
technology, what are you watching? The score at the end of one period at the Met Center in Minnesota, the New York Islanders 2, the Minnesota North Stars 1. The shots on goal by Minnesota 19 and by the Islanders 14. The scoring went this way, power play goals for the Islanders. Robert sitting on a tripping penalty when Denny Potvin scored on a shot from the point. Gilbert and Trotche assisting at the 9-17 mark for Potvin, his ninth goal of the season. A holding penalty to Brad Maxwell at 10:47 led to the second goal. Greg Gilbert completing a pretty passing play with Mike Bossy. An assist as well to Thomas Johnson. It comes at 12:36. The Islanders up two to nothing. But then at 18:31, Willie Plett capped off a couple of chances that Broughton had uh, been foiled on. Balancing came up with a couple of key saves, only to have Plett put it into virtually an empty net. For Plett, his fifth goal of the year, scored in 18:31. All in all, a pretty good period of hockey as the Islanders and the North Stars seem to uh, know the moves of one another. They do, Jags, and you know, you look back at the period, and it's a little bit like old-time hockey, kind of in favor of it myself. You see some pretty good hitting, some hard skating, some good goaltending, and uh, all around, everybody's digging and working very hard, and yet the score is not out of uh, whack like a lot of the hockey that we see where at the end of a period you may have seen six or seven goals. Here there's only three all hard-earned goals, and you know, when a team makes a mistake and it's costly, they have to really now be careful, and the Islanders made some mistakes early, and Roland Melanson bailed them out, and so did Gordy Deneen on his fine move on Broughton. So the Islanders are not without mistakes. Uh, Minnesota are working very hard, and that's where you see the 19 shots that they got come from. Yeah, I agree with you. The Islanders have had a tendency, uh, well, they had it last night, as a matter of fact, to leave the goaltender all alone back there a few times, and Melanson, I thought, handled himself very well the three goaltender situation and of course with the schedule the way it's been in the last week or so neither of the goaltenders or none of them actually getting the amount of work that I'm sure they would like to have. It's a fine line between uh, how much rest and how much action and I'm sure that when we've talked to each one of the goaltenders separately they, they all agree that they'd like to play a lot more and the reason for that of course is so that they're much sharper. In practice you get a variety of shots there's no question and the coaches uh, they'll try their hardest to give them all of the kinds of shots that they think they would need to work on, but there's nothing like uh, actual game uh, conditions to sharpen goaltenders. Well, indeed, the Islanders lead it 2-1. to one. It's New Year's Eve here at the Met Center, wherever you're planning to celebrate the evening. Hope you enjoy it. Eddie has gone out and gotten the oldest Islander on this New Year's Eve, and Butch Goring will be guesting with him right after these messages. I didn't look up for it. Uh, why don't you just give me the hand signal? Give me, give me one, one minute. Uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> A whole table. <laughs> <laughs> You see that they've got two point men now that are on their power play, which has got to help them. Yeah. Scoring for Let me get on this side. Why do you want? Okay. Yeah, I'll get on this side so I can see the. Uh, so I can. See. You start with a knee on again. I never did that one. Hey Jeff, how you doing? One minute!
tray bag. <laughs> oh, Come on, time. <laughs> Go ahead, roll the opening. George. Live from New York City, within stumbling distance of Times Square, it's the third annual MTV New Year's Eve Rock and Roll Ball. The largest, loudest, loosest New Year's Eve party in the history of the world, and you're on the guest list. Tonight, live all across America, we'll celebrate New Year's as it streaks through each and every time zone. Four New Year's in all. We'll talk to the most famous gate crashers in the world, and live on stage, the Stray Cats, Billy Idol, the Thompson Twins, Cindy Lauper, and from England via satellite, the animals, and a surprise from the police. Now, we go live to the heart of Times Square in New York City for the third annual MTV New Year's Eve Rock and Roll Ball. Quinn, the moment has arrived. We've been waiting 365 days for the wildest, greatest, loudest party since the invention of confetti. If you want Guy Lombardo, if you want eggnog, forget about it. Change the channel because that is not what you're going to get here. For the next four hours, we'll bring in four New Year's and four time zones. Anything can happen around the corner and right here. Times Square is going wild. There are thousands of people out there. So we beefed up our own security because this is the hottest ticket in New York City.